All right, welcome back to the Uninformed Catholic. This is Jed, and this is Jeremy, and we are here to talk about whatever we want. Boom, 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 well, today we are talking about the uh, the Curia reform in that, that's currently up the pipeline, right? And um, yeah, well, I, we're we're just kind of uh, you know worried about this, just like everything else that's happening now. And uh, Jed, what do you see most uh, concerning about this from the get go? Well, uh, it looks like a lot of this is skepticism uh, to an extent, uh, but quite a few sites have put out different things saying that there's this new document, uh, Predicate Evangelium, uh, or something to evangelize, you know. Uh, and it looks like that it, someone's leaked this. Uh, it might not be real, but most likely it is. It looks like there's going to be a reform where the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith is going to be stuck under a new congregation for evangelization and the new evangelization. Uh, so uh, there, there's a lot of thoughts there. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. All right. <laughs> well, uh, so this is a potential restructure in the church, which is always um, what you want to hear, 2,000-year-old church changing. And the governing bodies... Like the CDF, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, has always been seen as kind of like the number two to the Pope, uh, from what I understand. And Pope Francis is looking to restructure it, to focus more heavily on evangelization, to, to put the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, which is also in charge of um, clergy abuse, uh, underneath the... Congregation for Evangelization. Uh, I gotta find the name for this. Yeah, what's your take, Jeremy? Um, well, we definitely don't need to give more power to evade justice to the people who have been perpetrating the uh, the the uh, recent uh, sexual crimes going on in the church, and uh, that's just one thing that I'm kind of smelling right here, right off the bat, that they're going to be able to evade a lot easier if they're given more power to be the ones checking checking themselves. I know there was talk about that at some point. Remember how um, when all that stuff first came out, they were all talking about how uh, the bishops should be holding each other accountable. Well, I think this over here just kind of formalizes that more in a, in, in a more you know legal type way. And I think that's, that's a problem because now it, it, it looks like they're going to, they're going to actually have uh some actual authority and, and power, you know, backing their ability to do things like that. So are you saying that you think the bishops are going to do less accountability because of this? Yes. Why? I, well, I think, I think they're going to be, uh, I think that, you know, because of, uh, of who is currently in power right around Pope Francis and his immediate... Um, in, immediate, in his immediate circle, those are the ones who are more likely to try to cover up uh, or continue covering up the, the types of things that have been happening. So I think that it's going um, it's, it's to do some pretty bad things for, uh, for keeping them accountable to uh, what they should be doing as the leadership uh, in the church. And it'll, again, I, what, what I'm saying is I think it'll help to strengthen their, their ability to cover up for each other rather than keeping each other accountable. I think the power will be abused. So you're saying kind of um, taking the CDF, which would normally judge uh, those accused, and sticking it underneath this uh, new uh, congregation for evangelization of peoples. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Yeah, okay. Well, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, <laughs> that's an interesting take. I hadn't really given it that spin myself, but it seems to be the way that uh, uh, this entire... Pontiff is being pontificate. Yeah, that is being examined uh, yeah. by a lot of these guys, especially you know church militant. Pretty much would argue that that is the uh, sole purpose of every move made uh, is to further that cause. So 
we're gonna, you know, uh, the, the LGBTQ cause in the church. So we're gonna see that. Uh, that's actually a, a good point. I hadn't really thought about that as much, uh, but that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Again, just it, I think it just seems to be a, a progressive uh, removal of all of the checks and balances that that you know that that's uh, you know keeping them from completely redefining everything and giving them full free reign over um, you know whatever behavior they want to be. Uh, you know, pretty much like it gives them free reign to do whatever the heck they want without feeling like there will be any consequences. I think I think that's kind of more or less what I'm getting at. Um, and uh, you know, it, it it's just now like like you said, like because we're we're putting uh, we're, we'd be putting the power of uh, the curia over what was it that you said that uh, the yeah, so he would be putting the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, which up until now has been kind of like the number two after the Pope on everything underneath a new or at least newly <laughs> uh, elected Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when I first read it, I actually, uh, you had sent it to me, uh, one of the articles on Crux, I think, Crux Now, and my first thought was like, oh, yeah, like evangelization, that makes sense. That's supposed to be the, the entire point of the church. Uh, yeah. One, yeah. So in theory, yeah. That's good. Yeah, in theory it sounded good. <laughs> but like immediately when I saw it, just based off of everything that's been happening, you know, and when you look at it, um, you know, in the context of all the other trends that have been, that have been coming out, you know, I, I, I immediately, my, my, you know, I, immediately my knee-jerk reaction was this is just going to be another way to, you know, open the floodgates even further to, uh, you know, to throw all doctrine and everything like that to the wayside for whatever the heck they want, whatever the heck they want to be evangelizing people to. So, you know, let's make the pro LGBTQAI, however many other letters there are in that acronym, church. Uh, let let that be the church to which we're evangelizing people. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as we make evangelization the uh, the central concern of what we're doing here. And, um, you know, I think that that was the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, again, it was like, okay, yeah, free reign on whatever, whatever the church is that we're evangelizing people to come to, you know, we'll, we'll define those terms and, uh, you know, however we like. And it, as soon as we make it sound most palatable, even if it sounds nothing like, you know, what, what the church has been for 2,000 years, at least we're going to be able to evangelize people and get them to come in, you know. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, we have candy. You know, this isn't the candy that we've made at the Vatican for years, but you know, now we have new candy, and uh, yeah, I'm, we're just going to tell you we've had it forever. So, and it's poisonous. Yeah, it's poisonous. <laughs> it's 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 yeah, it, it's it's not um, it's candy. It, it's saltwater taffy made from water from the river of sticks, not the Tiber. So you know, it's a little bit different. All righty, <laughs> uh, I think the good point that that flows nicely with my thought process was. Uh, evangelizing to whatever the heck we want. And um, this is kind of what I was thinking once I gave it a little bit of thought. Um, Coming from the current pontificate uh, and other higher up bishops that have been speaking recently, uh, and by recently I mean in the last six years, uh, there's been a lot of talk of uh, hell's not real or hell's empty, depending on which side of the, the new theology you fall on. Um, and the Catholic Church is, is just... Oh, that's a good sound. Uh-oh, guys, the Vatican placed a bomb in the room because they don't want us talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I lost my train there. So depending on what side of the new theology you fall on, either hell is empty or hell doesn't exist. Uh, and this is kind of what's been pushed slightly subliminally, but also pretty straight up over the last few years. Uh, so far so that I think Bishop Barron said it too. Yeah. Uh, the hell's empty part. Mm-hmm. And uh, plenty of other people we know, maybe family members. Oh, you didn't Bishop Barron first start out just saying we don't have to believe that there are people in hell and then... He further retracted that uh, that there would be people in hell when he was talking to Ben Shapiro. Was that it, or uh, 
with Ben Shapiro or Ruben, one of them, because the one, the one he said Catholicism is the privileged path, mm-hmm. and the other, which by the way sounds exactly like the 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 main stance that Pope Francis is taking right now about that, especially with what what was that the the World Ecumenic? I, I I have no idea what it's called, but it was like that big uh, gathering of you know uh, many different religions where Pope Francis declared that each or all these religions have efficacy or something like that, and that God wills the pluralism of religion. It just kind of oh, yeah, yeah. it just kind of sounds like it falls into that same uh, that same school of thought where um, uh, you know all pretty much it just sounds like yeah that Catholicism is the privileged path. But I think Pope Francis sounds like he could be taking it further uh, to say that Catholicism isn't even a privileged path. It just is another path. I think. Yeah, it kind of feels like it's heading that direction for sure. Uh, that all comes down with the sole single government throughout the world, mm-hmm. uh, UN agenda. But uh, that's also where uh, I think Bishop Athanasius Snyder has been delving deeply into of this plurality of religions. Uh, I, f- I feel like we're will. I feel like we're about to cross the threshold that we've been pushing up against, where we talk about the new world order at some point. That's not exciting. Yeah, it's not exciting, uh, <laughs> in some sense. Uh, so, but anyway, so uh, g- getting a little back on topic, although that is relevant, um, what are they evangelizing to? And I think that's an important part. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Like that's that's the thing that always drove. Like I, I would be screaming this from the rooftops, and no rooftops because I don't climb on top of buildings, but. Like I, I would, I, I would be like shouting this to people, like guys, you don't understand. Like, yeah, evangelization. It, it's just kind of like a candy coating of what they're actually saying. They're like, oh, you know, uh, as long as we slap the word evangelization in front of it, we've already got like, you know, all all these new, all, all these Catholics who have like a renewed enthusiasm for the faith. You know, here here to the buzzword evangelization, and immediately, you know, they just don't consider anything being said after evangelization. It's almost like their preliminary get-out-of-jail card. Like we say, oh, evangelization is important, and it's kind of like, you know, that's the thing that gets all the snaps. Oh, man, new pope or bishop, whoever said that, is so woke or whatever, or something, you know. Super woke. Super woke. Um, and, uh, you know, it, like I said, people just hear evangelization and their brains shut off, and they don't care whatever's said afterwards because, you know, um, being pastoral now means, you know, you know, say whatever you want uh, and, uh, you know, call, you know, define the faith however you like as long as we're evangelizing. I think that's what Jed was saying, really. Uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of what I'm getting at. I think that there's two roads this could go down, uh, mm-hmm. and neither one is necessarily wrong. Uh, it could be both. But they're saying, okay, let's everything, nothing, everything at the expense of evangelization. And I remember there's a there's a priest here that Jeremy and I both like. Uh, we won't call him out so he doesn't get fired. But uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> he likes to talk about, or he mentions regularly, that in, in seminary they were forced to memorize the final line of code of canon law. And that in, is that... Um, The salvation of souls must always be the supreme law of the church and is to be kept in one's eyes. So I did paraphrase a little bit there, but that's what it says. So Mm -hmm. after all this canon law, which is not what it used to be, but still good, um, (laughs) they go ahead and say, okay, every essentially what the Pope is saying now, every anything at the expense of evangelization. Mm -hmm. Uh, And when you're following canon law, that might actually work out because it's pretty well structured, although arguably not well enough uh, and changed too often. Yeah. But overall, but what the Pope is saying is, okay, everything at the expense uh, of evangelization and we're going to change the religion. So th- there's two things. Either he's evangelizing to his ideals, uh, which are not in line with the teachings of the Catholic Church from what we understand mm-hmm. over the last six years, or... He, uh, it, he's just using this as uh, I don't want to just say him because there's plenty of people on board with this using this as a scapegoat to undermine doctrine and I think that one's more likely but I think they're both bad because okay let's say anything at the expense of evangelization we start changing the church LGBTQ agenda whatever else you want to hear now we're evangelizing into a church that 
uh, is not in a good spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other argument is if he doesn't believe anyone's hell or he doesn't believe that this is the only way, to, like I'm the way, the truth, and the life, that Jesus Christ is the only way uh, to get to heaven, why bother evangelizing? Yeah, no, well, that's that's the other thing. I think I think a lot of this could just be summed up in saying that uh, we're we're you know yeah evangelization we're we're making that the priority, but we're evangelizing people to what is now a caricature of the actual Catholic faith. I think that's probably the the easiest way to sum up what's going on. It's a caricature of the Catholic faith, but it's also in a way a fatal caricature caricature of the Catholic faith because my interface just cut out and came back in, um, but uh. No, yeah, it's it's a like a fatal uh, caricature of the Catholic faith because not only is it uh, you know just kind of like a misrepresentation, but it's almost like heading in the direction of an antithesis of the Catholic faith, and that's that's a big problem, um, you know. Uh, so I mean, you know, I, I guess I, I'm going to keep coming full circle here, but you know. Um, People like the idea of evangelization, which makes sense, you know. But but uh, I, I think Jed was saying, you, you know, um, what are we evangelizing them to if we're evangelizing them to a caricature of the Catholic faith? And, um, you know, why, why evangelization to begin with if there's no such thing as hell and there's no consequence for not being evangelized? And if Jesus Christ is not the way and the truth and the life, then what's the point of evangelization? Are we just trying to get people to come to Catholic club? Like caricature Catholic club, like that's that's what it's becoming now. It's it's a club where the only thing that you really have to show for is maybe a baptism certificate. If we're going to even still endorse baptism as something important in the years to come, like that's that's kind of how I feel about that at this point. Um, you know, like like you get what I'm saying? Yeah, he's winning on two fronts because, uh, like you said, you're bringing people into almost like a a shadow of the Catholic faith. Um, which also endorses all the world's agenda. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on the other side of that, by not believing that evangelization is important at all, but putting it in the forefront and then throwing doctrine underneath it, you're able to undermine doctrine as much as you want. So uh, this is a big move if, if, um, if this is truly going through. Uh, I think that this is exactly what the Pope <laughs> wants to happen. Uh, just kind of like he's able to undermine doctrine, uh, change change rules uh, for the agenda that he's looking to change them for. And at the same time, he's throwing it under this idea of evangelization, which catches a lot of people uh, who are, like Jeremy said, zealous, recently zealous about their faith. And yeah. on top of that, brings people into his agenda instead of the true Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's a good, <laughs> a good bit. I think we struggled with this a lot, or yeah. at least... If not while focused missionaries, pri- uh, post focused life, because um, we were both focused missionaries. We we love this. Uh, I don't know about Jeremy so much. I love this idea of evangelization, and every time I, I oh my gosh, you remember it? Everyone goes like just haywire. Someone says the Bishop Barron says evangelization should you, uh, you know the Pope <laughs> says something new about evangelization, mm-hmm. and because it's a new evangelization apostolate, uh, which it does pretty well overall, I think. Um, <laughs> arguable, then <laughs> everyone just goes crazy and they want to quote it and they want to use it with their students. And, and uh, yeah, you just catch, I mean, that's, that's a big one, but there's tons of other new evangelization apostolates that are even less well-formed and just going to go along with whatever they hear as long as it uses the word evangelization. Which I think is the point that I was trying to make before. It's exactly what Jeremy was saying. <laughs> um, but I, I think, okay, so here's, here's the other thing that I think could be happening. It's almost kind of like, um, you know, Pope Francis is pulling, like, ripping all of the legs out from under, underneath the bar stool, which holds up the Catholic faith, the bar stool, huh? Because we're Catholic and we like alcohol. But, but um, he, he, it's, I, I, kind of, I kind of do wonder, you know, you, they, they talk about the Freemasonic in, infiltration of the church, um, which Jed and I have talked about before, and a plot to destroy the church, and then there's, you know, you know, continuity of thought that would lead you to uh, believe maybe, you know, Pope Francis is instrumental in, in bringing this, you know, into fruition. Um, I, I, kind of, I kind of wonder if, uh, you know, Pope Francis is a passive role if he's, or, or if he's um, an active role. And by that I mean, is he a useful idiot or does he know exactly what he's doing? And if he knows exactly what he's doing, then everything that we're talking about is, is part of the plan because it sounds like 
you know, you're, you're, you're taking the purpose of the church, right, which is to bring people to Jesus, and you're kind of ripping that out, and you're, you're using evangelization to draw people in to evangelize them to a church that, you know, if we're going to follow this line of thinking, that um, doesn't actually really have a purpose, so we're bringing people to something purposeless. I mean, I, I, I guess I could spend some time to lay this whole thing out, but it, it could even be just a way to completely dissolve the Catholic Church and get rid of it. Like, if that's actually the, the agenda behind this whole thing, somewhere, even if it's not immediately behind Pope Francis's thinking, uh, it sounds a lot like a lot of the things that we laid out, you know, the way that they're being done in tandem with one another, that eventually that it could actually very well dissolve the Catholic Church. Because I think it sounds like from all angles here, like, we're, we're removing, you know, the purpose of the Catholic Church, uh, you know, um, so like, I mean, do you kind of see what I mean, Jed? Yeah, for sure. It's, um, that's an interesting thought. Overall, I think one of the more uh, pertinent things there was, is this Pope Francis's thought process or is he a puppet, uh, essentially? Uh, and I think that that's a difficult thing to answer. I'm hoping um, that that will become more clear as we... Uh, here, I don't know if you know Taylor Marshall's book coming out, Infiltration. I think that's going to lay down a lot of what's been going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very excited about that. But uh, my two cents would be that he's been groomed, but he's taking orders. Uh, there, there are a lot of cardinals that are much smarter, uh, craftier, more well-educated than him uh, that prepared him for the pontificate mm -hmm. and are now telling him what to do. Uh, no, I think he knows what's going on. Yeah, for sure. But, but. <laughs> I, I, I think that, I, like, I, I think the one thing that I'm getting at, I, I, th I think we all kind of take, I, I think very often we take the bait and we look at what's happening, and we start, you know, bantering about what's happening. Like, you know, they're oh, they're they're trying to include LGBTQIA stuff here, or they're trying to, uh, you know, they're 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 trying to undermine the teaching on hell. They're trying to undermine the divinity of Christ and and, and um. You know, and, and the exclusivity in salvation through through Jesus Christ um, and all that stuff. But, I mean, again, like, I, I, th I think we do need to look at the big picture and be like, you know, is is all this part of the ploy to just completely destroy the Catholic Church? Like, uh, is it, are, are these people the, the cogs in, in the plan? Um, are they just, you know, like, like we said about Pope Francis, are they just, like, you know, uh, check boxes and cogs in the system? Or are they all completely aware of what they're doing? Um, and they're they're taking active roles um, it, with with full knowledge to undermine the Catholic Church and and destroy it. And you know, a, a, like a couple of years ago, I think th this would have sounded like you know we're just kind of throwing around conspiratorial material here, um, or like conspiracy theory like material. But I think that uh, you know if we're actually going to try to think of this in uh, in the like the grand scheme of this whole thing. Uh, that there's a central plot to undermine and, and destroy the Catholic Church, that some of the main players that are involved, you know, especially if they were put in place by people who had this intention, uh, probably are well aware of what's going on. And, uh, you know, we need to view everything happening in light of that, I think, to understand the full scope of what's going on. Yeah, that's well put. <laughs> um I mean, I don't know. I mean, that that's a lot of it. That's that's a lot of my take. Because yeah. like I cuz if cuz if you want to think about like if if the end goal is not to, you know, okay, like it, it's not to reform the church. If the end goal is actually to destroy the church, then, you know, bringing gay issues and stuff like that into the church is not like the the it, the the purpose of that is not to be inclusive to gay people. It's to destroy the church and it's not just, you know, predicated on you know, the whole issue of homosexuality, it's predicated on, you know, this is something that the church has stood for throughout all of time. And if we, if we rip this leg out from underneath the bar stool, yeah, I don't know why I'm using that analogy so much, but if we rip this leg out, that's one less thing that we have to stand on, uh, that, that, that the church has to stand on, I guess. And, um, you know, the church separates herself from the rest of the world by standing for what she has always stood for. And as soon as the church compromises everything that she like the, the world doesn't want the catholic church to be the catholic church like if the world had its way the catholic church would cease to exist yeah, you know? why why is that why is that yeah expand on the statement 
that well, the world doesn't want the Catholic Church to be the Catholic Church. Because I think a lot of these people you asked, are they in on it or are they cogs in the machine? And they are they, they have to be cogs in the machine if you know, we can't get three billion people in on taking down the Catholic Church without everyone knowing. Well well the, the cogs well the, the ones that I'm talking about, I'm talking about more like the like the people who were immediately around Pope Francis in, in that particular circle of influence. And by that, I mean like the cardinals. And, okay, so then why do the, does the rest of the world not want the Catholic Church to be the Catholic Church? Um, well, the, the reason that I would say that only is, well, I mean, we can, we can kind of, I, I would just think of this more from the perspective of like the Catholic Church, like a, who, who, is, who, is the, uh, who is the prince of the world? The, the devil is the prince of the world, right? Like I, I think it, I, I don't know where in scripture that says, I'm, I'm clearly. Yeah, that's, that, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, the true. devil is the prince of the world, uh, you know, all that, or, you know, sometimes like he's referred to as like the god of the earth, which I know is, it, it, it's, that, that's kind of a stretch, but you, you know what I'm yeah, referring yeah, to. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so like all things purely earthly, um, you know, are, are not going to naturally line up with the will of God, right? Um, you know, just because of like the fall and all that. Maybe, maybe, we, maybe I could support that theologically and unpack that at some point, which I currently don't have the capacity to do because I'm kind of pulling this off of my, off the top of my head right now, just stream of consciousness here. But like, um, I think, I think w- what I was kind of getting at was, um, you know, uh, I mean, if you look at like the, the church get with the times, what does that actually mean when people say have the church get with the times? Sex. Well, sex, but I, th- I, th- I think, I, I think all this falls into like it, it all gets obscured by, um, by semantics. Like when you hear people say the church should get with the times, I think what actually is behind that is they want the church to dissolve into the secular way of thinking, and just conform with the greater, uh, you know, um, the greater overarching mentality of everything secular. Um, cause right, like the, ch- the church by, the church by nature is like God's authority structure on earth, uh, by which he communicates his authority and so, and, uh, the way to salvation to his people. Um, the world rejects God and the world puts, uh, you know, secular ideals and humanism, uh, in the place of God. Therefore, um, you know, it, it, you know, it, you could almost think of it. It's like the job of the world to evangelize everyone to, um, you know, the, the mission of the world, which is human. I, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of really like pulling this. Like I said, I'm, but I, I think you see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm on board, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of did digress a bit much. I mean, if if you don't mind, I'll try to kind of pull this full circle. I kind of like to brain yeah, vomit a lot, it, yeah. but so I, th- I think really what I'm trying to say is, you know. The reform that's happening in the Catholic Church, like if the reform is actually being spearheaded by, you know, cardinals who are more interested in the secular world who, you know, purportedly are, you know, put in their position by uh, people in the secular world with an agenda to undermine the church, then it just kind of makes sense that, you know, the, the, the parties in question would prefer that uh, that the church just disappear because it's an annoyance that uh, that gets in the way of you know the world conducting itself the way that it would like to, and it kind of looks at God and His law as a hindrance to you know pursuing um, you know just I, I guess a state of pure decadency and um, or decadence decadence start making up words here when uh but uh <laughs> it's all right I missed the words so it's good <laughs> yeah um like a uh, you know. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I'm curious um, to kind of see how this plays out. Obviously, I'm not excited about it. But yes, there is a huge plot, whether conscious or subconscious, with most people to take down the Catholic Church. Uh, They wouldn't say it like that, probably. Mm -hmm. But at least to change it to make it a secular organization that fulfills the UN agenda, uh, New World Order, whatever you want to call it. And as Catholics... I don't want to make this like a morbid thing all the time, so I just want to throw out there: as Catholics, we believe that Satan will never prepare, uh, prevail against the Church. Thank goodness, uh, we have that assurance. Uh, there will be a lot of low moments. There will be a lot of times. I mean, there's already been times where people don't have a priest and and they spend generations baptizing each other, and just that's all they get. Um, so persecution has has been uh, more blatant in the past, but. 
I'm curious as to these people, whether they are just secularists who want to see the church change, or if they are satanic and they want to see the entire church taken down completely. Uh, and this is a curious thought because obviously a ton of secularists who are not truly satanic, at least not in name or knowingly, uh, also want to see the church taken down. And these are the useful cogs in the, in the system where they're not necessarily, uh, they, they might not necessarily be um, consciously on board with this, but they're what you, what you could call, you know, not so lovingly useful idiots. Exactly. And this is the majority of the world. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but it's true. <laughs> so stay woke. Jed and I, um, as the uninformed Catholic, are the useless idiots. Exactly. Um, but no, use, useful idiots. Oh, use, no, we're useless, the useless yeah, idiots. To them, useless. Yeah, yep. useless idiots. Uh, so I'm just curious because obviously there has to be something satanic going on higher up uh, to make this happen. There, but, there's definitely, there's actually, I don't, I, I love cutting off Jed, especially because I've had coffee. Um, Jed, maybe, maybe Jed will learn not to bring Jeremy coffee when we do podcasts, even though we won't have too many more of these in person with each getting other. Getting small next time. But, um, but yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> sorry, Jed. <laughs> um, but like, I, I just kind of, I, I pulled this up because like, I remember we, uh, like when Jed and I were missionaries, I had found this this video on YouTube called. Uh, it, it was like about women's ordination, and it was it was a joke after Carly Rae Jepsen's "Call Me Maybe," and oh, it was yeah. uh, called yeah, "Ordain yeah. a Lady." And I I just want to like th- this is what came to my mind when I said the world would like the Catholic Church to disappear and dissolve into into you know the secular world. Um, and what I was basically saying is, if these people had their way, the Catholic Church would cease to exist because it wouldn't be different than the secular world. So, like, these these uh, these women, they want to reform the governance of the Catholic Church, including canon law, to be inclusive, accountable, and transparent. They want equality and justice for women in all dimensions of life in the ministry of the Catholic Church, and they want to incorporate uh, feminist, womanist, mudrista, and other liberal, uh, other liberating spiritualities into everyday Catholicism. So, this is what I meant. Like, it's basically shatter Catholic identity and, you know, make it whatever we want. Because, again, the overarching, uh, I think the overarching mentality is the Catholic Church as it is uh, limits us. It's not quote-unquote inclusive because it had, like, by nature the Catholic Church is exclusive because by nature salvation is exclusive. But as soon as we remove the teachings on hell and undermine all of this stuff, then all of that goes away. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. Exactly. So now, this this is going to be my hot take, though. Uh, this is less about, obviously, it's less about evangelization than anything, but it is an anti-evangelization. So the the Pope, or, you know, we don't, we don't have to say it's Pope Francis, but we can. So we'll just say the Pope. Um, he wants to create this new system where evangelization is on the top, doctrine gets pushed to the side or underneath or completely eliminated, uh, everyone judging those who commit the abuses or homosexual abuses in the church, which they commonly are, uh, is now underneath evangelization, which are his people. And then we are going to try and bring as many people into this thinking, this thought process as us. And it's not going to be no different than the rest of the world. So we continue to evangelize. Everything's under the name of evangelization. We're bringing people into a church that looks no different outwardly than the rest of the world, except small pockets of it, obviously. And at the end of the day, everyone stops being Catholic because it's no different than the rest of the world. So it's an evangelization for not the Catholic Church. (laughs) It's an anti-evangelization. We are bringing a bunch of people into a system that's failing so that when it fails, there is nothing different there's nothing to fight for at that point yeah no and, and that that's what i was saying about it. it's like the perfect ploy to destroy the catholic church it's like let's let's uh you know bring all these people on board with this gradually decaying thing that's not even the catholic church because of it, it doesn't share any of the any of the ideals or doctrine and then once that collapses we've already taken everybody out of the actual catholic church and it's just gone it's like it erased it, it's erased it never even was there yeah That is a uh, pretty smart plot. It's going to be tough to be Catholic in a few years. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, so that that is 
all I got. What else, Jeremy? That I I, I think uh, I think that's, that's pretty, pretty good. I so, think that's pretty good. I I, I hope. Uh, I hope I didn't ramble too much this whole time. And no, I hope- you're good. I think I talk more than all the others, so okay. that's good. Uh, so hot takes, we're going to say um, this is not about evangelization. This no. is about undermining doctrine and getting people on board with, with the new agenda. Uh, and then on top of that, like Jeremy said, decaying church. So you bring a bunch of people into it, and then one day it's just gone and no one notices because it's no different than the world. Right. Well put, Jed. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, We'll see you next time. Uh, This has been the Uninformed Catholic. All right, Jed, take us out. Boom. Oh. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom. All right. Anyway, see you guys next time. (laughs)